Right, welcome back for another episode of Testing the Tips, where I, as an average golfer just like you, test out some of the tips from the very best golf YouTubers out there. I look at their tips and drills, I've tried them myself, relay them back to you, and see if they're any good, whether they can help us average golfers improve our game. And in this case, it's looking at the short game in and around the green, which can be massively costly. And we're looking at a simple few changes that can perhaps save you a whole lot of golf shots. I'm impressed with this, you know. Impressed. Right, so chipping is such a critical part of the game and like I said, can be very costly. And the common mistakes we make is kind of uh, fatting them, catching them heavy, or thinning them, blading them through. I think what Danny does in this video really, really well is he explains why we might do each of those two things. And I'll attempt to explain it, but as I say in every video, is that it's my interpretation of what Danny has said. But if you want a better explanation from that PGA professional, then make sure you go and check out Danny's full video and I'll put the link down below. But what he's saying is, is to concentrate. We're going we're to get an address position, which is quite different for me. And I think the idea is to simplify the chipping motion that will work in the majority of situations. It's not ideal for everywhere that you might find yourself on a golf course, but for the majority of situations when we need to chip, this is what we'll do. But for now, let me just explain what he talks about the butt end of the club and why we thin or fat. When we take any sort of swing position, the generally rotation in the shoulders, club head sits down low, we swing round and the butt will either face that way or it'll end up facing that way. And that's very much on the follow through that way and we end up hitting a fat. And on the vice versa, if we come into the ball with the butt facing that way, and I'm exaggerating this motion a bit, then we end up hitting a thin, yeah? So we get flippy going that way or we go the other way and we get heavy, we smother the ball and we hit a fat. Because what we're trying to do is use hitting the chip and run shot, which will approach shortly, Perhaps for me, I'd be looking to sort of smother that ball, but there is that occasion where, again, and as Danny rightly points out, that butt is pointing forward and you hit down, you don't get that right, that's where the fat comes from and vice versa, the thin. So that's what he's trying to eradicate. He's taking those uh, possibilities out of the equation, if you like. So how does he do it? Well, first of all, there's a massive change in terms of the way he addresses the ball and the way the club sits. He looks at the club as very much as a, 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 this is a pitching wedge, by the way, we're going to use two clubs for this drill, but this is pitching wedge. He looks at the club as a pendulum. It's very much upright and it's swinging like that. And this is the way we're going to address the ball very much upright, very alien to me. Address the ball, like I said, almost stood, very much vertical. Ball in the back of the stance. And all he asks us to do is to swing with a very much a, a pendulum like motion. Right? Even I'm struggling to do it now. And to do that, there's just a slight break in the wrist, this back wrist, and it's as if you're throwing a ball, is how he explains it, on an underarm throw. And all we're gonna do is take it back and through, back and through. Now this is for a chip and run, don't forget. We've got a lot of green, we've got a pitching wedge, and all we're trying to do, and let me give it a go, is back and through. We haven't picked the easiest of places here to do a little bit of a demo because it's on a massive slope, this shot. But the idea is that probably pitched up a little bit higher than I wanted it to. So standing up high, back and through. Let me try that again. So back, through. That was the shot I was trying to hit, which was that much lower chip and run. That might even go in the hole. A bit better effort. So the idea, like I said, almost as if the heel of the club, when you stood at a dress, almost as if the heel of the toe, uh, the heel of the club is slightly raised off the ground. And again, the hands feel awkward, but it's just about taking that little bit of wrist break with the rear hand, the lower hand, and then through. And what it does, I'll give it one more go, back and through. Now what it does, it eliminates, first of all, I thought that was going to go in. First of all, what it does, it gets the ball rolling at the hole, right? So we've got no kind of, uh, we're not trying to throw this thing up in the air. We're not trying to uh, be overcomplicating the chipping game. And the many times where we're going to 
chip over a bunker or whatever kind of thing that gets in our way we are going to have to have different shots in our repertoire but to simplify the chipping efforts and to get something rolling at the hole the first thing is that chipping when we've got plenty of green to work with stand up tall this butt now isn't going to the right it isn't going to the left i'm not smothering it i'm not moving there's a, there's not much body movement whatsoever so we're taking all the kind of things that make the golf swing very complicated we're taking all those things out the equation all we're doing is standing up tall ball at the back of the stance that back through and then there and you'll see that when I swing through, there's a bit of a rise in the butt. And again, it's the way Danny explains it. I don't really sort of understand this bit, but the butt will come back and then it moves slightly upwards in an upwards finish. So we're slightly, so we're back and then we're up. And that's all we're doing. It's a real, real simplistic way of chipping. It's not a method that I've ever used before. I've never stood that club up so tall. But what it does just in this first instance as a chip and run, it gets the ball rolling at the hole. It's not got a lot going on. There's no great movements. There's no great flicking of wrist. We're not smothering it. We're not trying to do anything special. Almost that pendulum motion of just letting a pitching wedge do its job. Pitching wedge, nine iron, whatever you think for that type of shot. Just let the ball run out and release. But obviously there's other shots that are going to require just a little bit of a different shot. So I'll move into another situation and see how adopting the same technique really simplifies that chipping again. Now don't forget that was a chip and run shot. So we've got the nine iron, we've got plenty of green to work with. We use that same motion. So what happens when we get into this position? We're on exactly the same green. We've got a little bit of um, first cut, if you like, that we've got to get over. But then the, cl uh, the flag is fairly close by so we don't want to chip and run we want this to just pop up a little bit and obviously we need it to stop and not release as much as that chip and run well all Danny explains is that we simply change club so everything stays the same the motion stays the same I've moved to a 58 I think in the demo video that he does he uses a 56 we address the ball exactly the same ball in the back of the stands nothing is changing hands and wrists are forward that heel is almost off the ground and don't forget it's that little chip my word i'm impressed with this you know i'm impressed with it because like i said in all these tips what i like to find out is bits that i've never adopted in my own game and i don't mind chipping it's not what i call a weak part of my game but this is a very simple and straightforward way of adopting something that really is effective let's try that again so hands forward so it's back you see it even just popped it up a little bit higher on that one there it's incredibly simple and the first thing like i said back to the chip and run it gets the ball rolling at the hole but it takes out so much of the bits that we can get wrong in terms of the thinning and the fatting and it just keeps it very much the swing is literally just a couple of feet all we've done is it's exactly the same swing length as what we played with the pitching wedge as what we're playing for this this shorter shot but the results are just the same it's just the loft helps to just pop that ball up really good tip this danny impressed right it's so a third and final situation we're going to put ourselves in and uh, it's not it's the kind of situation that most average golfers aren't going to like we're sitting down in the rough we've got a pin fairly close by can that same technique work in this situation as well well danny says so but we're going to find out and trust me i've never tried this shot before and prior to the six shots you've heard me watch on video I'd never try this technique at all. Like I said, this is brand new to me. Uh, but anyway, we'll do exactly the same thing. Club with heel off the thing. Don't forget, it's that pendulum motion that we're trying to get. So, back off the ground, back in the stance. Let's just have a little bit of a practice swing. So, that's all it should be. Should be, let's see. So, back. Oh, my word. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. How good is that? And again, right, I forgot to mention, I've got still got the 58 wedge. So the only thing that changes throughout this, depending on what situation you find yourself in and how far you want that ball to travel, is the wedge, the loft that's on your club. So from going from pitching wedge through to this, 
we're still back in the realms of that 58 club together there's no major body movements going on there's no bit the club's not traveling far it's traveling in pretty much a straight line it almost feels like so we're taking all the complications out of what is a real difficult situation and really simplifying it. and that's what i like about what danny moore does with his videos right And that just goes to show that it doesn't work every time. And do you know what? I mean, I dug in there, so what went wrong? I mean, it'd be interesting to watch it back. What did I do differently than I didn't do on that first shot? But you can see I've took a bit of a chunk there. Definitely got a bit of ground before ball. So let's try that again. So heel off, back. So back. That's better. Could go in this one. Much better, I think. I and mean, again, I'll have to watch that back, but I think there was a little bit of hesitancy in that second one. Maybe just stabbed it a bit. And as I've said with all these tips, the reason I leave those shots in is because the idea is there's not a magic one. They still need practicing. But the point is eradicating shots for all the, the, the ability of losing shots and chipping is a massive, can be hugely costly. You go all that effort you get from tee to green and then you go and three stab from here and it's a real killer to your game and to your scorecard. And I love the idea of this tip, like I do with them all, where they really simplify matters and they try and make the game as easy as possible for us to get from A to B and get it in the hole. Love that, Danny. And it's certainly something that I will put into my own game when I'm in those situations. I'll practice that just a little bit more. Right, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, I say in every episode, people seem to be liking this, but what I like is the comments section being filled with golfers who either try this tip themselves, go out and try it after watching this video, come back and tell me and other golfers whether or not they had success or what problems they had with it. Because by reading all those comments between everybody else, it gives a good indicator of did this only work for me or is it working for a large majority of golfers out there? And I think that then encourages others to give it a try. Right, as ever, thank you for watching this Test in the Tip series. I am really going to practice that just a little bit more because I think it's a real, real winner. And uh, once again, thanks to Danny Maud. But for this video, I'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. And uh, I'll see you all next Thursday for another Test in the Tips.